Namaste, I'm Shiv Mirabito of Shivastan Press of Woodstock and Kathmandu. And this is a book called Opium Dense I Have Known, written by poet Peter Lamborn Wilson and illustrated by painter Chris Martin. And please enjoy the film. Opium Dens I Have Known. One, Rashid Baez off Sukhalaji Street, Bombay, above narrow alley with open sewer. Patan Gangster used to have himself oiled and massaged every day. Clientele included Hydra transvestite eunuch whores and other criminal types. We used to attend the horse races with Rashid in our raw silk suits and return to the beach for famous snacks and cool faluda. Pierced by human thought, the dreary region of the dead, where all things are forgotten. Soon as I go from earth, what will become of? Two, Mr. Fong's Chinabara, Calcutta, the ideal Oden, perfect 19th century Chinese style with porcelain headrests, wooden platforms, fancy pipes, cured for years in a bath of opium and honey, endless cups of Darjeeling tea, customers, old gentlemen with translucent skin, using the den as their retirement club, our friend, Mr. Wu, brought his own pipe made from spiral ram's horn with ivory and jade, drowsing away the days as Naxalite bombs went off in the distance and dung smoke rose from the appalling slum outside the window. Three, <clears throat> Khan Baba's Quetta Baluchistan, Pakistan, back alley, anonymous mud brick. The boss, another genial Patan giant, used to lay on occasional kalyans of charas free for regular customers. Here, James attained local fame, playing the American sake, making pipes professionally. How to prepare thick syrup from raw teriyak, spin it on a pin over the lamp, leaving the doughnut of O stuck to the tiny hole of the bowl, ready to be melted into morphine. Customers included our pal, well-to-do, ne'er-do-well, Malik Bai, camel drivers, Sufis, a few déclassé government clerks, 
Quetta was a frontier Sybaris in those days, but let's stick to the subject. No digressions. Herat, Afghanistan, the old quarter, without electricity, sank each night into an ocean of stars. Odors of wood smoke, mutton, sewage, spices, like a bathysphere containing a whole city of mud domes, minarets, and moonlit courtyards full of sleeping camels. I've forgotten the owner's name, something Khan, a man of almost saintly generosity and genius, who had painted the underside of his den's dome with frescoes of folkloric paradisial foliage and beasts, red, black, blue, green, yellow, bounding lines on whitewashed plaster, a masterpiece and continual delight for smokers' hypnagogic candlelit eyes. His little son had to guide me through Stygian stinking mazes past police under the unpolluted canopy of the 15th century, back to my hotel in the new city, listening to horse carriages clopping after midnight somewhere off in the falling snow of Khorasan. In Iran, the whole gestalt was different. Techniques dating back to Central Asian Neolithic, more primitive pipes, mangal of hot coals, the plant in its pure form, no Chinese fancy refinements. The effect, less obliviating, practice at home, perhaps with a few boon companions rather than dens, sweet tea, candy, fruit, perhaps a tape of classical oud or tar, some witty chat and gossip about ideas. The Persian ideal, win an argument by quoting a couplet from Hafez or Saadi. Persian art's notorious abhorrence of vacuum matches exactly this mild addiction to exfoliation of language and reverie, making it so attractive to Sufis and musicians who experience the necessary aesthetic emotion of pain Dard, in the course of their daily work. In Shiite law, O is classified unrecommended but permitted, leading to well-known multitudes of stoned mullahs. Once I smoked with millers in water-powered flour mill, huge grindstones emitting gold clouds of atomic wheat into shafts of sun. In Kerman province, where they say, one out of four is addicted, and why not, when it grows everywhere, 
like free scarlet weeds, and life is sad, and sleep is good. Six. In the early 80s, I visited a den in Penang. The Siamese South Indian Malay Muslim Chinese former British colony, Island Kingdom. But only once, the owner seemed nervous and hurried to urge me out after a few pipes. So later in the old Chinese hotel, I puked seasick from the slow revolving ceiling fan, but then felt great and wrote an entire essay on Ismaili metaphysics, which I later sent to William Burroughs, as he mentions in the acknowledgments to Paradiso Assassin Egyptian Volume 3 of his Commedia Divina. 7. This turned out to be my last opium den. Unknown to me, history was moving on. A few years later, crime writer Nick Toskis traveled around the world searching for the real thing. It seemed to be going extinct. But now we know why. The crime lords have discovered that heroin is so much more profitable. They decreed forced closure of all dens, an end to the old Fu Manchuismo of decadent post-colonial days. Now, efficient, bottom-line, global neoliberal doctrine no longer needs Mr. Fong, Mr. Wu. They're dinosaurs, they're doornails like Rambeau and Cocteau, and the youth of tomorrow will never know that old slice of crow, as the Chinese called it, that little bronze cup of black syrup, never smell that most intelligent of smells, as Salvador Dali called it, and never nod out as horse carriages disappear in snow. Yeah.